I've got one. Thanks, Adrian. Um, and thank you all for coming. It, it's really good to be here today and see um, the amount of energy and enthusiasm for this stuff that we've got. Um, everything else around us this week feels pretty demoralising. Um, we're, we're under pressure from all sides around mental health, around A&E, around waiting times, around our, the fact that we are struggling to deliver on some of our um, key targets and, and, and struggling to deliver for people who are sick. But, but when you boil it down, the, the main problem we've got at the moment is that the capacity we have in our services is absolutely unable to keep up with demand. Um, and so we feel as though we're constantly firefighting, people are constantly under pressure, we can't quite keep up. And so people wait forever in A&E, people wait forever for beds, waiting times get longer. But actually this stuff's the solution. Um, and so it feels really positive that we're starting to get hold of it and starting to understand what we need to do and what a difference it this can make. We will never meet demand by increasing the capacity in hospitals and in secondary care services uh, or even in primary care services to just keep doing what we do and do more and more and more of it faster and faster and faster and meet the demand from this tide of patients coming through to us. We will only um, be able to manage by doing something about how we manage that demand, how we prevent exacerbation, how we keep people well and independent, how we recognise when people are sick and getting worse and actually understand what the interventions are that we can make that are going to make a difference to that. And we know that 40% of the disease burden we see in our system is preventable or modifiable. If we don't do something with that 40%, we will never, ever, ever, no matter what we spend or how many hospitals we build, we will never manage, we will never cope, and we'll always then feel completely overwhelmed by the demand. And so this stuff is really important, and it's really hard sometimes to give it the time and space when you're faced with constant demands to actually understand it and start to deliver it and work in a different way. So I'm really pleased to see what's happened in these four neighbourhoods that have really got hold of this and picked some areas to focus on. Um, the challenge for us is, A, how do we not make this something where we say, wasn't that great, wasn't that interesting, right, we've done that now, let's go back to getting our head down and getting drowned by demand. Um, so how do we build on this and develop this in these neighbourhoods, and how do we take the other 34 neighbourhoods in Lancashire and South Cumbria and say to them, this is what we've learned, this is what you can, how you can learn from us, this is what you need to do. And the timing is perfect. Last week, we had the whole of Lancashire and South Cumbria GP practices signed up to primary care networks. We've got clinical directors for all of them. Everybody knows which network we're in. We've got a funding stream coming to support that network development, which is coming online very, very soon. And so this is the opportunity to say, because what we're getting from practices is, OK, we've signed up, send us some money. Now what do we do? What, what's it about? Why are we doing it? What are we going to get from it? And this is the stuff. We need to say to them, this is the difference that working in a network with your neighbourhood, with the other people in your neighbourhood, whether that's your community, the voluntary sector or community services, this is the difference it can make. And this is how understanding the evidence, the clinical evidence and the demographic data and the activity data and the finance data, bringing all of that together helps you understand how best to manage the population in that neighbourhood. And we need to be ready to give that to people so that we build on the enthusiasm we've got for people signing up to networks and working in neighbourhoods and actually use it to make a difference and target some of our investment there. And that way, we'll relieve some of what feels like overwhelmingly difficult to deal with pressure on our other services and it gives us a chance to feel a bit positive about what we're doing. So this is great, we need more of it. Most importantly, we need to not forget about it after today. We need to keep working in this way and spread it to the other neighbourhoods. So thank you all, thank you particularly to our colleagues from Optum and NHS England and others who've put the time into helping us learn and develop this. And um, <laughs> all this stuff will help solve the problem. So um, have a good day. Thank you for all the effort you've put in. And uh, this is really, really making me feel more positive about things. So thank you. <laughs>